Hi, I'm Trisha Carp at trishacarp.com, the place you'll find everything you need to become a powerful speaker. When you walk into a room to give a talk, you have about 30 seconds to hook your audience and some of that time is before you even open your mouth to speak. So it's really important that you're well aware of how you enter the room. There are a few simple steps you can take before you take those first steps into the room. I'm going to give you one today because if you can master this, you're more than halfway to where you need to be to own the room. The first thing you need to know is this, what you are thinking and feeling about giving your talk is written all over your face and in your body language. If you're investing in thoughts and ideas that won't serve you like, I'm not well prepared enough, or everyone else in the room knows more than me, or I don't really deserve to be standing here giving this talk and people will think I'm a fraud, they'll be showing up. Neuroscientists have discovered that our intentions shape how our brain functions, and those intentions create shortcuts in our minds that become the path of least resistance. So the more you think something, the easier it becomes for your mind to process. If you're constantly telling yourself public speaking is scary, and there's no way you can be confident enough to own the room, those thoughts will become a belief, pattern and habit, and they will show up, especially in your body language, in the ways you stand and talk. Our brains have the capacity to unconsciously process 10,000 different facial expressions. People in your audience can tell when you're uncomfortable. That makes them feel uncomfortable and they focus more on your discomfort than what you're saying. It's not a recipe for connection, let alone owning the room. I'll give you an example of how this works. I want you to imagine you have an important talk coming up. You've structured it well, you know your content, you've practiced and practiced, maybe even put in hours of practice. What you haven't prepared for is the two women sitting in the front row who are whispering and giggling and playing with their phones. And the belief that triggers in you that no one's really interested in what you have to say. So what is the point of standing up there? You start to lose your nerve, you stumble, and with every word you say, your presence and power start to fade. The way to create a different possibility is to recognize your limiting thoughts and replace them with a new, clear intention. This is crucial for building your presence in the room and your impact. So ask yourself, which beliefs are walking into the room with you? What are the stories you're buying into about your ability as a public speaker and your confidence or lack of, and if you're too shy or too intense, or whether you even deserve a place on the stage. You might have stories about not being able to use your talks to get the type of results you want. A lot of my clients think they need to be salesy or like those people in the shiny suits offering you a list of special deals infused with the fear of missing out so you'll buy now, which isn't necessary at all, I'm here to tell you. What do you need to drop? Write a list, might be a long one. And what do you want your new intention to be? So spend some time getting really clear on all this. Then your behaviors, language, and actions will start to match your new intention, one that sees you powerfully owning the room. Thanks so much for watching. If you know someone who's telling herself stories about her confidence or lack of, especially when it comes to standing up and speaking, and of course that aren't true, please share this video with her and help her out. I'm Trisha Carp. I'll see you next time.